What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com coming to you from Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium following Arkansas's 24-13 come-from-behind win over the Tennessee Volunteers in a game that it didn't look like they came out ready to play. It looked like Tennessee, all they were going to have to do is run the ball behind that big five-star sumo offensive line. You know, Tennessee's got better personnel than Arkansas has, but i tell you what they ain't got. I ain't got that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about, that heart, that soul. Just football is not just about that. It's not just about having a bunch of five-star players. It is a lot. And you take a team like Texas A&M that's got a little bit of that heart and soul. You know, and that's going to be a hard team to beat. But you can't come in here into Razorback Stadium under a coached team by Sam Pittman and play like that in the second half. I don't know what Arkansas did if they went into halftime and took a bunch of Wheaties, got a big bowl of Wheaties for everybody. But they figured it out. According to Sam Pittman, the second half, you know, second quarter towards the end there, they started kind of figuring it out a little bit more, figuring out what they had to do. They made some adjustments. But that wasn't just about adjustments. That was about coming out with some fire, attacking, being ruthless. And I'm sitting there thinking in the press box, if Jim Chaney does anything but run the ball the rest of this game, what is he thinking? I was about to say something I shouldn't have said, but what is he thinking? And because they were just gashing them. It was just one play after another. Eric Gray, a guy that I really liked in recruiting. Now, I had a feeling all week about this one, and I was starting to question myself, but I had a feeling all week. I picked Arkansas 35-24. They still won by 11, I guess, uh, but 24-13 was the final score. And uh, I don't know, I just, from right, if you remember my walk and talk right after when I was gonna pick Arkansas to win this game, I just, I just had that feeling going into this one. And, it comes down a lot of it to the quarterback situation. Arkansas has got better quarterback situation. Garantano was knocked out of the game in the third quarter. But Felipe, and I see this on Twitter and I see it on message boards and stuff during the game, that they're ready for somebody else other than Felipe Franks. And I just people just have some perspective. The guy's not perfect, but he is Arkansas's answer at quarterback. He was 18 of 24 passing, only had 215 yards, three touchdown passes, 191.5 efficiency rating. That's exceptional, okay? He's not perfect. He only threw the, I think he only threw the ball away one time, took some sacks. You know, some of that's offensive line, but you gotta give the guy credit. I mean, he's the best quarterback that Arkansas has had in a long time. He's the best running quarterback that Arkansas has had since Matt Jones. So have a little bit of perspective. Mike Woods, Blake Kern. Blake Kern caught his first touchdown as a Razorback former walk-on tight end. That's the kind of guy that you want to have back next year because everybody gets this year back. So Blake Kern, come on back. He ought to be welcome with open, open arms. Um, Traylon Burks, what, what else can you say about Traylon Burks? He only had five catches, maybe seven touches on the day. But the guy's just an animal. He's just an animal. And Felipe found him deep on that 59-yarder, which is the longest play of the season for Arkansas. I hate that he ended up five yards short, but Arkansas couldn't like put the ball in the air there at the end of the game. But I hate that he ended up five yards short because every game that he would have ended this year would be a hundred yard game. But Traylon Burks is just, he's a machine. I mean, such a talent. Rakeem Boyd, 19 carries, 60 some yards. Traylon Smith, nine carries for 72 yards. Devion Warren had a good game too. Devion had a good game. Bumper pull, Grant. Jalen Catalan, all those guys went over uh, 10 tackles. Jalen Catalan had 10 tackles in the first quarter. I mean, it was like when you look at the time of possession in that game in the first quarter, it's just like it's, it's really shocking to see how well Tennessee controlled the ball. That first quarter went, I mean, it was gone. And I think like of the first 16 or so minutes, they had possessed the ball 14 minutes. And you're just thinking, man, I didn't get a good feeling after that one. I don't think anybody did. Um, Arkansas special teams have got to continue to improve, but kudos to A.J. Reed for kicking that 48-yarder and Sam Pittman for having the confidence in him to go back in there and do it. I mean, you got to have confidence in your guy. That's the thing about Pittman that he does so well. He believes in his players. He lets them, he lets them know that he believes in them. And they just buy in, and that's if, if anybody ever watched my walk and talk after Sam Pittman was introduced as head coach. I just—it's a situation where people were disappointed because you know they wanted this coach or that coach, and you know kind of being mocked and stuff nationally. 
but the guy gets it. The guy gets what it takes to be a football team. And it's something that Chad Morris never got at Arkansas. There I go talking about Chad again. But it's, it's, it's just from a perspective standpoint, you can see these guys play at a different level. What do you guys think Arkansas would have done last year in this game if they'd gone down 13-0 at home to Tennessee? What do you think the final score would be? 48 to 10, something like that. I mean, we're used to seeing that plenty. Get a good look at the stadium like I like to do, like I like to do. Beautiful evening, great evening for football. I mean, I just wish there could have been more than 16,500 fans in there. It still got loud. It was nice, a nice environment. I don't know how much of it is like piped in stuff, but I can feel the vibrations happening. I can feel the vibrations. I feel good. <laughs> It's a good feeling to beat Tennessee. Arkansas has beaten them three years in a row, three times in a row, not three years in a row. They haven't played that often. But, you know, going back to 2011, the Joe Adams punt return game, they won 49-7. They went down to Knoxville. I think they survived a opening kick, kickoff return for a touchdown and came back and won that one 24-20 and now this one. Uh, so Arkansas has been pretty impressive as of late against Tennessee. I guess it's lucky for them that they missed them during the horrific stretch <laughs> but uh, Arkansas has got a three game winning streak against an actual SEC team three wins this season should be four Arkansas should have four wins this season they should be four and what four and two is that right they already played that many games yeah so they should be nationally ranked and it's not because they've got the best talent in the SEC. They've got a long way to go as far as recruiting. I mean, like I was saying, when you look at that Tennessee offensive line, those dudes are freaking huge. And then, you know, Arkansas's offensive line trots out there, and they're just, you can just tell they're just a lot leaner, not, as, not nearly as big as those guys. It looks like a bunch of sumo wrestlers. And Arkansas is not there yet, but, um, you know, the defensive line, I was kind of questioning, you know, because I feel like Arkansas has got a really good defensive line. Julius Coates looks, he looks a lot like Dietrich Wise in a lot of ways, but he was actually my guy to, uh, to break out. I picked him to break out this game. I also picked Trey Knox, but I thought Trey Knox, being a Tennessee guy, might, might finally shine through. But your time's coming, Trey. Head up. It'll happen for you at some point. But... Um, Again, I don't know what else to say aside from kudos to Arkansas. I don't know that I'm going to be picking them to beat Florida. Florida's playing extremely well. It's in the swamp next weekend. They beat Georgia tonight, today. Georgia's a very talented team, obviously. But um, you ought to enjoy this one while you can. I don't mean to say it like that, but enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it, Razorback fans, because you are damn well earned it. You've been through. You've been through some rough times. And this is a quick turnaround, and it just goes to show again that Arkansas is not an impossible situation. It's not the dead-end job. It's not the job that you wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole, as one coach put it who was involved in the coaching search. It's not that. You can win here. You're a little farther away from talent, and that's it. Look at these facilities. Look at the pride the state has in this team. There's so many reasons for Arkansas to be a really good program. And every once in a while, be a great program. But so much of it comes down to coaches. As I like to say, it's not just about the Jimmys and the Joes. It's also about the X's and the O's. It's about the momentum. It's about the culture. It's about that, isn't it? I want to stop short of just saying congratulations to these guys just because there's so much more to play. There's so much more football. There's so much more to be done with this program. But, man, the momentum, you can feel it. It's palpable. So kudos to, to them. Not a congratulations yet. There's still a lot more to play. But they're doing it the right way. I mean, there's some things you're going to question, obviously. There's some things you wonder about. Why would you call this? Why would you get fancy here? You know, when this works, just run the ball and all that stuff. It's easy to say that kind of stuff in game, you know. Nothing's going to be perfect. Even the guys in the NFL don't, don't, you know, they're not perfect. But I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I don't know what else to say other than you, as a Razorback, 
if you're not proud of these guys, then I don't know what to tell you. If you're not encouraged by the direction of this program, then I got nothing for you. Because that's about as good as it gets in terms of positive vibes. So I'm going to wrap it up. Appreciate you all watching the walk and talk. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I enjoy doing it. But uh, we're going to wrap it. All right, everybody. This has been Trey Biddy from hogsports.com coming to you from Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium following Arkansas's 24-13 win over the Tennessee Volunteers. We'll catch you next time.